Oh, maple syrup. What could be better than taking tree blood, concentrating it down into a delicious goo, and then pouring that goo onto pancakes? Not much. The unfortunate thing, though, is that maple syrup is really, really, really expensive. It takes 40 gallons of tree sap to produce just one gallon of maple syrup. This guy cost me over 10 bucks, just for a little thing. That's why stuff like this exists. This is not maple syrup. This is an insult to trees. What this is, is corn syrup, artificial coloring, and artificial flavoring. But what I don't understand is why it has to be one of two extremes. Why does it have to be something that's really, really delicious or something that is really, really terrible? So today, I'm going to attempt to find a middle ground between these two products, and I'm going to do that by using fenugreek seeds. Fenugreek are actually the seeds of a plant that is part of the pea family. In fact, the little pods that these seeds come from look a little bit like regular you know, snow peas. Fenugreek is not something that's easy to find, at least where I live here in the United States. However, it is very, very popular in a lot of other countries. It's especially popular in the Indian subcontinent, where it's used in a lot of curries. It's used in the Middle East a lot. Um, it's used in Africa. It's used in a lot of spice blends in certain parts of Europe. Fenugreek is a really interesting spice. It's got a really unique flavor, and it can be used to make a lot of really tasty dishes. So I recommend picking it up, playing with it. But today, I'm gonna focus just on one peculiar aspect about fenugreek, and that has to do with what it has to do with maple syrup. And to get into this deeply, we're gonna have to do some experimenting. So let's go to the kitchen. So fenugreek seeds are sometimes used to make an artificial maple syrup extract. And that is because they contain a chemical compound that is similar in scent to maple syrup. And that compound is, uh, I believe, sotalan. Probably saying that wrong. And uh, sotalan is such a powerful compound that if you eat like a whole bunch of Indian food, you may notice that you start to smell like maple syrup. You start getting this kind of like sweet smell. And that is because the sotalan will actually emanate out of your pores with your sweat. And it also can make your pee smell. That may sound like a good time to you. However, there is a little bit of a concern with this because there is actually a disorder known as maple syrup urine disease. It means that your body is not breaking down all the amino acids properly or something like that. And as a result, it makes your pee smell like maple syrup. Okay, and if you are pregnant and you have maple syrup urine disease, it can cause birth defects. So if you go to the doctor because you're pregnant and they give you a urinalysis and they notice that there is a maple syrup smell to it, it's a cause for alarm because it might mean that you have maple syrup uh, urine disease. Fenugreek can give you a false positive on that. It still gives you the same sort of result as maple syrup urine disease. However, it's not because of a disorder. It's because you just ate a whole bunch of fenugreek seeds. Seems like it might actually be a rare occurrence. However, one thing that people like fenugreek for is a purported medical benefit of increasing lactation. So if you are a mom-to-be, you might be taking a supplement for increased lactation, and that might include fenugreek seeds. And that fenugreek seeds might cause your urine to smell like maple syrup, and that might be a cause for alarm for your doctor. So for me, and I'm sure a lot of you, this sounds fantastic. Maple syrup smelling urine. Wonderful. But if you're pregnant, you might want to exercise some caution. So making extracts is very easy to do, and it's something that I've done on this channel in the past. Um, for instance, this is some vanilla extract that I made. You just take some vanilla pods and you top it off with vodka and after a few months the vodka will extract some of the flavor from those pods that's all that vanilla extract is and what's great about stuff like this is that you can decant the extract out of this put it in a bottle and then top it off this is the second time that i've 
fill this up to the top and it's not even all the way done yet. You can see it's pretty dark. Uh, you can get a lot of flavor out of very aromatic spices like vanilla and you can do something like that also with fenugreek. If you were to put vodka in this, it would extract flavors out of it. However, this is something that people have tried to do in the past and failed because fenugreek is not maple, okay? It's not maple syrup. This is something that contains a compound that is similar to maple syrup, but that's not all that's in here. There are more flavors in here. And uh, what those flavors are, uh, this is probably very difficult to see, but I've got one fenugreek seed right there. Let me tell you what this tastes like. They're very hard, okay? And although I do detect a little bit of a maple syrup flavor in there, it also tastes a little bit like, like a pea, and it's kind of bitter, and a little bit like celery seed. So yeah, one of those flavors in there is what I want. I don't want the other ones. And what I see recommended online for making um, desserts with fenugreek and some dishes with fenugreek is that people will add water in order to kind of leach out some of the bitter compounds that are in there. So I'm going to take half a cup of fenugreek seeds, fill that jar up with water, and leave it out overnight. Wow, um, I, I did not expect this to happen. It's been about 12 hours, and those fenugreek seeds really, really puffed up. It quadrupled in size. So my big question now is, is this going to smell like maple syrup? And is that liquid off the top going to be like maple syrup? Probably not. It smells a little sweet. Vaguely like maple syrup, but mostly like peas. Some of the websites that tout the medicinal benefits of fenugreek say that the liquid that comes out of this is good for you. So let me see what, see what this tastes like. Oh. Oh no. Really, really bitter. Really bitter. Um, so, yeah, good. Good to... That's the part I'm getting rid of, so I, I take that as a good thing, right? I'm going to strain the seeds, then I'm going to rinse them out a few times with water, but to get a little bit more of that bitterness out, and then I'm going to dry them out again, okay? So I'm going to lay them out on a baking sheet, put them back into the oven, on a very low temperature, I have it set to 170, just so they can get some of that water to evaporate. Okay, it's been about an hour and a half, and these fenugreek seeds are now pretty dry. They're not as dry as how they were when I started, but they are dry enough to toast. And toast I will. I'm gonna actually kick up the heat on the oven to about 350 degrees, and I'm going to check on them like every 10 minutes or so until they turn a nice golden brown, and maybe, just maybe, I won't burn them. By the way, my apartment right now just reeks of maple syrup, so I think I'm doing something right. It's definitely different. <laughs> Still kind of bitter, maybe not as bitter, and it's got a flavor kind of like um, beanie popcorn. It's weird because it's like the maple syrup is in the air. And like when you put it in your mouth and you taste it, it doesn't really initially taste like maple syrup, but I'm starting to feel like a little bit of an aftertaste of maple syrup. So I don't know if this is going to work or not. Like the problem here is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna make an extract out of it, and in the end, you gotta have to hope that what gets extracted is gonna be the flavor that I want. So I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but uh, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take these seeds, I'm going to place them in a jar, and then I'm going to add vodka to the uh, top of the jar and let this sit until it is done. And to act as a control group, I'm going to also do this with just plain seeds that have not been soaked or toasted or anything. Maybe this is all a waste of time. <laughs> we'll find out. 
Okay, it has been one whole week and my extracts definitely got a lot darker and my apartment still smells like a sugar shack. So <laughs> this stuff is really, really strong. I haven't even opened these yet, but even with the jars closed, with the lid on, this one smells just like maple syrup. This one, not so much. So I think I did something right. <laughs> So I can get this one off. This one, I can't get it open for the life of me. Um, <laughs> so here's a kitchen hack that I learned from my grandmother. Can't open a jar, do this. I don't know why it works, but it works. Okay, the regular fenugreek, and of course, it, it puffed up a lot, so these things are drunk. <laughs> and it smells like... Mm, not very good. It does have a little bit of the maple syrup smell, but it also has like a vegetal smell to it that uh, it's kind of like beany. Okay, and next, the one that got toasted. It doesn't smell like maple syrup. It did when I had the lid on. It smells kind of like, like a toasted sesame seed. Maybe it's not like an olfactory sort of thing. Maybe it's more of like a taste thing. The flavor of that is bitter and like burnt toast. So maybe this didn't work. Oh. Oh, hold on. It <laughs> Here's the thing with this. The initial taste isn't maple syrup. The aftertaste is. I'm tasting it now. Like a, like a minute has gone by. And now I'm starting to taste it. It's not just maple syrup, though. It's also like, like caramel. Like a caramel and maple syrup sort of taste. It's there, but it's not the initial taste you get. I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, hopefully, you know, once I mix this with like sugar and stuff, the flavor that I want will come out more. Um, but as it is, not exactly what I was hoping for, but it is still there. So I'm gonna move forward, let's see. And out of curiosity, let's uh, try a little bit of this. The smell on it is not good, <laughs> definitely not good. Like a bitter cabbage kind of taste. Maybe a little like celery. But again, the aftertaste is maple syrup. So I think the one that I toasted is going to be better because the initial flavor is more pleasant, even though they both do have that maple syrup coming in at the, uh, at the end there. So let's see what happens with the toasted one. So I think this extract is plenty strong. <laughs> if it were to be in here any longer, it might get some of that bitterness that I don't want. So I'm actually gonna filter out the, the seeds here. So there you have it, the fenugreek extract. <laughs> Whenever you need a little maple flavor, this should do it. And uh, this would be good as something to put in like a tea or like some coffee or something, uh, in baked goods. If you wanna add a little bit of maple flavor to something, this should do it. This episode is sponsored by me. See that? I've got t-shirts. I sell these over on my website which I have linked in the description below. That's it, back to the video. If I wanted to do this in a really quick way, I would just take some of this and mix it with corn syrup and that would give me basically this or something like this. Uh, the next step after that would be to make like a simple syrup, take some sugar, take some water, boil it, add some of that extract to it, and then you'd have a quick maple syrup. However, I think in order to replicate maple syrup, I need to create more depth to it. Okay, I want a more rich flavor than just like sugar water. And that's why I'm going to attempt to make my own golden syrup. Golden syrup is something that I've talked about in the past. I used it in my Icelandic thunder bread recipe, and it is really, really good stuff. It's popular in like Europe, in European countries you'll find it. But here where I live in the US, it is not a common thing. I can't get it at the markets where I live, so I'm going to attempt to make it, or at least I'm gonna make an approximation of it because how you make real golden syrup is like a big production. It's made from refining sugar cane into an invert sugar whatever that means. 
but you can make a close approximation of it by taking sugar and water and a little bit of lemon and cooking it down. And what's good about this is that it's going to actually like caramelize that sugar a little bit, put a little bit more flavor into it, and then I think it will have the depth that I'm looking for. I hope. The reason why I add the lemon to it is if you don't, there's a good chance that this is going to crystallize. That's a concern usually, but it's extra concerning if I'm using extract, which I'm going to be adding later. If you add alcohol to a syrup, it's more likely to crystallize. Don't throw these things away. This is great. You can actually put that with a cup of tea. So it's cooled down, looks good. It's got a nice color to it. It's uh, the right consistency, but it's still warm. And I think once this cools down, it's gonna get too thick. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of water in, just like, I don't know, like a tablespoon or something. And next I'm going to add the extract. I don't know how much of the extract to add, so first I'm going to just try a little bit of the syrup on its own. That's pretty good. It's not exactly like uh, golden syrup. Golden syrup has more of a caramel sort of flavor to it. This one is a little bit milder, not as rich, but still pretty good. And the lemon taste in there is... it's there, but it's slight. I, I was worried that that would overpower the syrup. It doesn't. I think once I add the extracts, that'll get rid of it. I'm going to start with one teaspoon of the uh, maple extract and see what that does. The initial taste is more like honey, oddly, and um, now I'm getting some of the maple. Okay, I think I'm going to add some more. And another thing that I saw some recipes for artificial maple syrup do is they put a little vanilla in it. So we're going to do two teaspoons of the maple extract and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay, moment of truth. Let's try it. I think this is going to be it. Don't think we're going to monkey around with it anymore. Smells like maple syrup. It worked. Oh my god, it worked. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to work. My worry is that this was going to have a vegetal taste, like the fenugreek has that celery seed sort of taste. It doesn't. That It's gone. I'm getting a maple taste um, without the bitterness, without that vegetal taste. So, of course, the next step is to use it. So I'm going to bottle this up, and then I'm going to make pancakes. To mark this occasion, I got a very special bottle. <laughs> Mrs. Butterworth has never had such a delicious syrup inside her. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> so my syrup ended up being a little too thick. I was afraid that was going to happen, and it happened. So what I did is I took my bottle of fenugreek syrup, I heated it up, and then I added some boiling water into the bottle, and then mix it up really well. So now it's fixed, but if I were to do this again, I would do that when I was making it. I would add like a half a cup of water, maybe, uh, in addition to the uh, one and one fourth that I put in there earlier. <laughs>
now for the true test. I'm going to take the three syrups, the regular maple syrup, my maple syrup, and then the other one, which um, shall not be named. I'm going to compare the three of them. First, the plain regular maple syrup. There it is. Very thin, nice dark color. Pretty good, gotta admit. This is the cheapest maple syrup that they had. It's grade A, but grade A maple syrup doesn't mean anything. All maple syrup can be listed as grade A. There's no such thing as a grade B anymore. Used to be, not anymore. So that's a cheap maple syrup, still tastes delicious. It's got a little bit of like a, a toasty flavor to it. And of course, a maple flavor. And um, yeah, nice and sweet, it's maple syrup. Next, let's try the corn syrup based maple syrup, quote unquote. And this one uh, is a lot thicker, that's for sure. I mean, this stuff is fine for what it is. For me, it's kind of like a little bit nostalgic. It makes me think about like eating at a Waffle House. You know, at a Waffle House, if you were to put regular maple syrup and you would put like real butter instead of margarine on your waffle at Waffle House, it just wouldn't be right. You know, it needs to be this sort of level of artificial for it to be good. <laughs> you know, there's something, there's something nostalgic about having that sort of flavor at a diner or like a fast food place or something. Um, and for that purpose, it's fine. It's just, it isn't maple syrup. You know, it's reminiscent of it, but it's got more of like a buttery taste it's got more of a sweet taste, and the, the texture's off. You know, like, real maple syrup is kind of thin. It's not really syrupy. This is, like, really thick and sticky. And finally, my fenugreek syrup. It, it does taste like maple syrup. I mean, initially, it doesn't. Initially, it tastes kind of like uh, honey, like a vanilla honey which is not a bad thing. And then you wait like 10, 20 seconds, and then you get this maple taste, which is really weird, but um, you know, it works. I think the, the vanilla in there is important because that gives you a, a maple syrup-ish sort of flavor before the actual maple taste hits you, or the fenugreek taste hits you. Uh, so I think you need that to kind of like round out the flavor. But if you keep eating the pancakes, by the t as you go along, that like first bite won't be an issue anymore. Like. Yeah, after the first 10 seconds, you're eating maple syrup. Uh, I'd say this isn't quite as good as real maple syrup, but it's a close approximation. It's definitely better and actually more like maple syrup than the corn syrup based one. Uh, and what I like about this one compared to the corn syrup based one is that this one is, um, although I think it is sweeter in a way, than real maple syrup, it's not like sickly sweet. And I think corn syrup has that issue. Like if you eat a lot of it, I feel kind of like, it's just like, it's too sweet. There's something heavy about it. This one is a little bit lighter. All things considered, I think making this was a big success. I would totally do this again. It's uh, a bit time consuming to go through all this, but it's fun. You know, making extracts is kind of fun and like seeing what sort of flavors you can get. It, I enjoy doing that. And I think this is something that um, wouldn't be like so much of a hassle to do. It just takes some time. And if you do that, it tastes good. It's dirt cheap and you can make a lot of it and it stays for a while. Like I don't have to make that extract again. Like if I want to make more syrup, I just go through the process again of making the syrup and there you go. So I think that's about it. This has showed me that you don't need to go to one extreme or the other, maple syrup or corn syrup. You can go right down the middle with fenugreek syrup. This was interesting to do. Uh, I hope you thought it was interesting. And if there's any other sort of spice or fruit sort of experiments you would like me to, to try, uh, let me know down below and I will see you all next time. I would like to give a big shout out to Lofty Rex and Smarter Every Day. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. Patreon.com is basically how I can afford to go on all the adventures I do on this channel. So if you enjoy my series and you want to help support me, 
check out the link in the description below. If you don't want to go on Patreon, I also have t-shirts for sale like this one here, the Durian Anatomy shirt. That is available on my website, which I also put in the description below. Thanks so much, everybody. See you next time.